symbols and spectacle can be powerful things. Not just for setting narratives or for establishing political power, but in warfare as well. Unlike many of their peers, House Carita, the Draconis Combine, has embraced an idea that its soldiers can be further inspired not only by valorous acts on the battlefield by their peers, but through the very appearance of their war machines. First truly starting with the Hotomoto Chi, a spin-off of the Charger and the Thug, the Combine would continue with time to build a series of, for lack of a better word, totem mechs over the century since this first mech's introduction. These machines appear to be almost like samurai warriors in various ways in regards to their armored plating or other elements. In the Dark Age, one of the most remarkable examples of this would be constructed, and it is probably the most recognizable of these samurai appearing mechs beyond the Hatomoto itself. Named for the founding ruler of House Karita, and having one of the most recognizable looks from its era of Battletech, in this video, we are going to examine Luthien Armorworks' heavy samurai-styled battle mech, the Shiro. Built explicitly to evoke nationalistic pride in the Draconis Combine, as well as to encourage soldiers and mech warriors with its samurai-like appearance, the 75-ton heavy mech known as the Shiro is one of the most recognizable and dangerous heavy mechs of the Dark Age. Even its name, Shiro, is meant to be attached to this, as it is titled after the founder of the Draconis Combine, Karita Shiro. These mechs themselves are considered to be an honor to be chosen to pilot, too with those who are assigned to them often being officers, and all of them having received military recognition in the form of honors being bestowed upon them. In most cases, it's noted as being the Bushido Blade. With all of this being taken into account, one can see the Shiro's appearance as being an essential part of its very being in its actual purpose. It is a beacon of nationalism, and a reward for the most loyal soldiers of the Combine as well as something that mech warriors should aspire to earn for themselves at some point. Its battlefield performance also is mostly a fierce one, with the Draconis Combine installing advanced and powerful technologies into this national icon of a war machine. The first of these monstrosities were constructed in 3135 by Luthien Armorworks. The developer, without a doubt, is the most important in the entirety of the Draconis Combine and it would be hard to say that any other mech manufacturer in-house Karita would be expected to bring a machine like this to the mustard soldiery. The mech itself was built for those who had received honors from the DCMS, as mentioned prior, but its main role on the battlefield is to be that of a tactical on-field command mech for officers, namely those who would, and should, be moving with local formations of mechs. This means that the Shiro will appear as a command mech for many lances, companies, or battalions. Interestingly though, it was never intended to be the mech leading these soldiers at the point of the spear. Instead, the Shiro was always built with the idea in mind that it can keep pace with heavy mech formations, and act as a coordinating leader from the back line of an advancing formation. In reality, this doesn't always end up being the case, with zealous Combine commanders sometimes ending up in the thick of the fighting, where they don't belong. Thankfully for the DCMS, the mech is very well protected, but this is not doctrinally how the mech is meant to be used. It's important to also point out that the Shiro does come with two distinct configurations, and always has from the start, with both being manufactured simultaneously in 3135. These two variants depart very much in terms of their battlefield capabilities, and the SH-2P, the much less commonly manufactured configuration of the Shiro, is considered to be an honored gift, awarded on behalf of the Gunji no Kanui. For most of the mech's history so far, 
the Gunji no Kanri was in fact Toranaga Masuhari, the man who would lead the Combine to a number of wildly successful victories in the Dark Age, including the taking of New Avalon. After the collapse of the HPG network and the explosion of violence and hostilities across the Inner Sphere, these two battle mechs would become centerpieces of Toranaga's campaign in almost every theater. They would lead battles against the Republic of the Sphere to liberate the Diaron military district from the yoke of the Republic's rule. When Toranaga turned towards his true enemy, House Davian, it would be at the forefront of the dragon's assault on the Draconis marches. Most fascinatingly, in the Battle of Exeter, a Davian world, the Tai Sa who had been awarded the Shiro for his deployment would have it revoked. As instead of properly leading his troops, he routinely brandished his mech to underlings instead of properly taking charge in the campaign. Unsurprisingly, his career ended in disgrace. This is an exception, however, because more glory follows this warrior-born machine than humiliation. The Shiro would be there when the Novacats were cut down for their treachery against the state. Most importantly, the Shiro would stand tall against the Federated Sons in more battles than just Exeter, playing a key role in the fall of Robinson, helping to seal the fate of the 12th Avalon Hussars, and then acting as a command mech for the legion of forces deployed on the inevitable victory on New Avalon. One of the most legendary victories in history, some time before these other victories, it would be a Shiro that crushed First Prince Caleb Davian inside of his tank. But as the sun rises and sets, and as the dragon awakens and tires, not all of these glories would last forever. The Gunji no Kanri would overextend his forces, as the Davians desperately rallied in response to their failures. This new First Prince would marshal his forces, and leverage an enormous amount of financial reserves and other assets to strike back against the Combine. Toronaga would be killed, and New Avalon would once more fall into the hands of the Federated Sons. And it is noteworthy that the Shiro would be amongst the defenders, fighting for the dragon's glory, even in defeat. Much of the rest of the dragon's tongue, their invasion corridor into the Suns, would be lost as well, with the Shiro falling besides the forces who stood fast in the face of the Davian response. Without a doubt, the Fed Sun Combine War and every other major conflict of the Dark Age where this 75-ton samurai led DCMS forces into battle not only cemented its worth as its steel was more than tested, but it also informed the enemies of House Karita what would await them should violence or conflict be the destiny between the house and its enemies. In victory, the Combine would be extravagantly supreme, and in defeat, they would force their enemies to pay a bitter price. The Shiro embodies this truth. The late Dark Age Luthien designed and manufactured heavy mech known as the Shiro, in its base configuration, the SH-1V, uses a series of advanced technologies to create a worthwhile fighter, support mech, and even an upfront juggernaut of last resort. Built with a number of considerations in mind, it does become a bit of a jack of all trades in some respects. Oddly, it's been called in-universe a pocket assault mech which does seem a bit off, if I'm honest, at least in comparison to other assault mechs of this time, and despite its heavier weight. Still, this 75-ton samurai warrior of the Draconis Combine is not a mech to be trifled with under most conditions. So, let's start going over why. A hunger for tonnage is one of the staples of this proud Caridon Colossus, and to try to combat this craving, the SH-1V uses endo-steel for its internal structure. This reduces its frame from being 7.5 tons down to 4 tons, but at the expense of a large volume of space inside of the battle mech. 
The starvation not being satiated by just this, however, would also result in the Shiro having an XL gyro installed on board, saving more tonnage in exchange for critical space once more. This also makes the mech more vulnerable to critical hits to the center torso, which may immediately destroy its ability to move across the battlefield. Still, XL gyros aren't uncommon at this time, and in this case is likely at least somewhat necessary, but it is a high price to pay for tonnage. The cockpit, the last of the key internal components on board this titanic battle mech, is of standard assembly. Being the Dark Age, it is essentially a default position that the SH-1V be equipped with double heat sinks. And it is. Zero tonnage is put into this, however, as the mech is mostly ballistics oriented, and once more, the Shiro is looking to save on tonnage where it can for other elements of the mech. This means that the SH-1V cools by 20 every turn. It can run marginally hot as a result, but it cannot suffer negative impacts, even with an alpha strike over the course of one turn, which ranks it as acceptable in my eyes. As far as electronics are concerned, Law made the choice to install a Cypher Comsys 4 communications package, as well as a Nico McGain 7 targeting and tracking system. Notably, neither of these components give the Shiro any additional benefits in-game. As a frontline command mech as well, this means its Cypher system does not actually confer it the command mech ability, which may not be crippling, but it does work against its intended battlefield role in the advanced rules. Speaking of those rules, it does have one trait which does give it a bonus with the advanced rules. Because of its dedicated samurai-like appearance, the Shiro benefits from the distracting quirk. There are many cases, for both the Inner Sphere and Clans, where huge engines are placed into 75-ton chassis to maximize their mobility. From the Timberwolf through to the War Dog, it is far from uncommon for a big engine to find its way into a heavy mech chassis. The Shiro follows in this tradition itself because of the intended role of the machine. As a frontline command mech, it needs to be able to keep up with formations, even if it's not in the thick of the fighting at every moment. It must match up with inner sheer battle line formations, breakthrough formations, and even potentially light and medium forces. To achieve the fastest output they can without risking the engine or the myomers on board, Law would install a 19.5 ton Ford 375 XL fusion engine, which would normally give the Shiro a maximum speed of 86 kilometers per hour. Because of its advanced defensive plating, however, the SH-1V's running movement is reduced by one, which means its maximum speed is in fact 75 kilometers per hour or seven movement points in the tabletop game. The engine itself, being an inner sphere XL engine, does mean if it loses a side torso, it will be immediately knocked out, further adding to the internal fragility of the mech. But it is a sacrifice which has to be made in order for the machine to achieve its movement goals. The mobility it's sacrificed for, however, means it can achieve, if moving in a straight line, reasonable defensive bonuses in the open. It also means that the Shiro is graceful and quick enough to, of course, keep in line with armies that it is leading, even if it is doing so from the rear. This means it can escape trouble if needed, or charge into battle as a last-ditch effort to salvage a faltering situation in harsh combat conditions. In essence, it gives it options, and options are, in and of themselves, power. It may not move like a mad cat, but it's faster than a marauder, and its engine is a major focus of weight and attention as a result. Beyond its reasonable ability to move, allowing it to generate defensive bonuses and find cover from enemy fire, the SH-1V places an exceptionally heavy focus on its exterior defenses, if only because of its extremely vulnerable internals. With an XL gyro, XL engine, and an abundance of volatile ammunition, all of which could result in the catastrophic failure of the battle mech if they were hit, the Shiro must be well guarded from enemy attacks. It does this in two key ways. The first 
is to have a Guardian ECM suite. While the Angel ECM had replaced the Guardian ECM for the most part by the time of its manufacturing, the Guardian, frankly, takes up less space, both in tonnage and critical, and this was likely the reason why it was chosen for the mech. This provides the Shiro with an invisible layer of electronic countermeasures that will safeguard it to some extent. Though more advanced targeting, tracking, and sensor arrays by Dark Age may limit its functionality to some extent should its opposition have something like a Bloodhound probe to fall back on. The real protection for the Shiro, however, comes in the form of its huge investment in hardened armor. Hardened armor more or less takes half damage from incoming fire, unless it's attacked by something like a re-engineered laser. And this allows the mech to go well past the threshold of armored plating as a result. So 16 points of hardened armor is equivalent under most conditions to 32 points of armor. Hardened plating only gives 8 points per ton, but once more, it allows the mech to just have more. Importantly though, hardened armor does reduce the maximum movement speed of a battle mech by 1, which is why the Shiro walks 5 and runs 7, rather than running 8. Functionally speaking though, because of this technology, the SH-1V has more armor than an Atlas as it has a shocking 21 tons of this material, giving it 168 points of plating, but making its carapace equivalent to 336 points of armor when facing most weaponry. This means that the Shiro can be very difficult to put down, should fire not manage to pierce into its internal systems. The SH-1V spends an enormous percentage of its tonnage on non-weapon systems. Now this can happen to any of these heavy mechs when it commits to being faster, but when combined with its abundance of armored protection, things start to get a bit cramped. In total, the mech has around 25.5 tons to play with for its weapon systems. Now, this isn't the end of the world, but it does limit what's possible in terms of its offensive power. It benefits greatly from using clan tech weaponry too, at least to some extent, but there is also, frankly, a blunder in regards to its primary cannon. So, to start with, the Shiro has four Shigunga C-type LRM-10 launchers. These are clan quality missile systems, which means they collectively only weigh 10 tons, and in total it has 3 tons of ammunition for them mounted in the right torso. The launchers themselves are spread evenly between the right and left torsos, to be clear. Now, Clan Tech LRM systems have one big advantage over their inner sphere counterparts, beyond just weighing half as much, in that they don't have a minimum range. This means the Shiro can fight at all ranges with these missiles, and may scorch enemies who come in trying to engage it in close, as if it were an archer. The true mistake the Shiro seems to make is its left arm cannon, which is a 6-ton Imperator LB-2X autocannon. That is right, it does two scatter damage, where one round may not even hit the target if it hits. This weapon has an extreme range, make no mistake, but it basically does no damage, and only has use shooting at VTOLs, or perhaps aerospace fighters. This might not be so bad, except for the fact that the Shiro, you know, only has about 25 tons of weaponry. When factoring in its ammunition, which is another ton, it makes the problem all the more severe. Genuinely, the SH-1V is great in a lot of respects, but the LB-2X is just a weapon with extremely limited value, and one which weighs a lot. It's a tonnage sink, and it's sad to see. Finally, to defend itself gracefully and close, it has a right arm mounted sword. This is an accurate striking close range weapon, as it does gain a 2 bonus to hit that will help the Shiro should the enemy try to come in close to fight it. The problem is, it doesn't do very much damage, as it only does 9 damage a swing. Now, this is still effective at crushing smaller mechs, certainly, but it does feel a bit light in this respect to invest 4 tons into a weapon that does one more damage than simply punching. Again, accuracy matters, and it can be useful, but in my eyes, swords are defective hatchets. 
This legendary command mech serves its purpose well. It's faster than most heavy missile support mechs from the Inner Sphere. It can launch bombardments of LRMs on targets routinely with little trouble. Its outer carapace is extremely tough, making it functionally more protected than an Atlas, most of the time. It does what's on the tin. It supports formations, keeping pace with them, and has excellent tactical maneuvering too. And it can get stuck in, should the situation demand it. Where things fail for the SH-1V is that it has a functionally useless left arm weapon that it spends a huge amount of tonnage on, and it has a sword, which is fine for what it is, but it may not always impress. The other major issue it has, of course, is that if anything gets past its hardened armor, the Shiro is filled with sensitive and volatile materials, which can and will degrade, or will destroy the mech should they be hit. There is no flawless mech out there, and while the Shiro may not be perfect, it is still something to be respected. Should a pilot and commander mask its weaknesses and press into its strengths, it will be a durable, frustrating piece for its enemies to remove from a battle. Should it be mismanaged, or should it be deployed into conditions not fitting for it, the Shiro will be disabled and destroyed in quick order. But, while the SH-1V is the mainstream configuration of the mech, Law did create another, far more dangerous counterpart to it. For the most favored of the Coordinator and the Gunji no Kanri. Built as a prized, almost unique upgrade for only the most talented and storied members of the Draconis Combine Mustard Soldiery, the SH-2P Shiro is a significant step up from its 1V counterpart. Assembled at the same time, but in much smaller numbers due to being much more expensive, mostly due to changes in its armored protection and armaments, so far the 2P is the peak Shiro configuration yet seen on the battlefields of the Inner Sphere. To begin our examination, because of its reconfiguration of weaponry and armor, it opens up more space for its cooling system, which is greatly enhanced. Its onboard heat sinks are increased from 10 to 13, giving it the ability to cool 26 per turn. These new heat sinks are deposited into the engine, meaning they don't take up any additional onboard critical space for the mech, thankfully. Following this up, the mech also has a coolant pod, which is essential for operating its new offensive package. This gives a brief enhancement to the mech's cooling, but if it is unused, it is yet another volatile component on board, which will, as you can guess, explode if struck by enemy fire. The defense of the SH-2P also changed radically, namely by removing its Guardian ECM to save on weight, but also changing out its hardened armor. With its plating now shifting to an alternative type, it means the mech's speed is also increased to 86 km per hour as well, making it faster on the battlefield too and giving it more options. The new plating it possesses is 19.5 tons of ballistic reinforced armor, arguably one of the best protective plating sets in the game. Autocannons, gauss rifles, and missiles will basically be halved in their effectiveness against the exterior shell of this new type of armor. It is very effective. In the realm of weaponry, its LRM-10 launchers remain unchanged, and so does its sword. The real difference is dropping its pitiful AC-2 autocannon and replacing it with a powerful, advanced, Clantech particle projection cannon. It's likely some form of Lord's Light PPC, but the official manufacturer has not been yet revealed as a part of its technical specifications. This, as you can probably already guess, is a head clipper and breakthrough weapon. It cannot be fired reliably with all of the missile systems due to heat concerns, save on turns where it is using its coolant pod. Still, it gives it a heavy, solid, concentrated punch, and one which is not ammunition dependent. It is much more fearsome of a weapon than a mere AC-2. In total, the SH-2P is more heavily gunned, almost as well protected, and is faster than its counterpart, the SH-1V. This is truly the Shiro to be most concerned about, should you find yourself facing one of these monsters down. 
It is truly the guardian of the coordinator and the keeper of the honor of the Draconis Combine Mustard Soldiery. When Gunji no Kanri Toronaga Matsuhari unleashed the Shiro on the enemies of the Draconis Combine, it was a shock to the Republic, and to the Federated Sons at the time. Shortly after, the Novacats discovered its deadly qualities as well. While the Combine has a multitude of other dangerous mechs from this time, and even more dangerous mechs which were retrofitted for the Dark Ages, there are few that left the lasting impact that the Shiro has. Not only did it play a role in multiple key battles, and was piloted by a man who would kill a first prince of the Federated Sons, the mech's striking appearance and decent battlefield performance only further cemented its credibility and legacy as one of the premier Draconis Combine mechs of this era. While the Shiro in its base form may waste tonnage on an AC-2, it is still armed like an archer, and is faster. One poor design decision often does not cripple a battle mech. In battle, the Shiro is extremely capable, and is very hard to remove, barring a lucky strike on ammunition or its gyro in rapid succession, of course. It is, at least in theory, as hard to remove as an atlas. Due to its mobility, it might even be more difficult to do so. Know that when you see this 75-ton warrior on the battlefield, it will often send legions of Combine forces before it, all while launching dangerous missile strikes. And if it's the SH-2P, it will be dangerous Clan ERPPC strikes as well. When their enemies are worn down or overwhelmed, only then will the Blade Master come in for the kill. The Dragon's Designers on Luthien have done their duty well, it seems. Because the Shiro has brought the dragon's law to the inner sphere. It is at the point of its blade that the Combine has achieved more success than in any other time in its history. The Summer Grass is all that remains of a soldier's dreams. The summer grass, the splendid dreams of samurai warriors. Thank you for joining me here today. There you go, the pride of the Draconis Combine during the Dark Age has been covered. The last of the member-voted mechs is coming up next. The Not-So-Mighty Malice, a 100-ton assault mech forged by the Republic of the Sphere. As per before, there will be links to the resources I used to make this video. This will also include links to Technical Readout Dark Age as well as Record Sheets Dark Age on the CGL website if you want to examine the Shiro in more detail for yourself. I will also have a link to Iron Wind Metal's Shiro as well, should you want to field one of these monsters on the battlefield. So that will all be in the top pinned comment in the comment section. A quick reminder too, if you like this video, don't forget to hit like, and if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I cover things very frequently, and you're going to enjoy the content coming up. A huge thank you to all the channel members who support this channel as well, of course. I've said it before and I always mean it. This content is really only made possible because of viewers like you. With that, what do you all think of the Shiro? Let me know in the comments section below and I'll catch you all there.